Hey guys, Terrence here. About four months ago, my truck started to make a tick noise at the on the passenger side of the engine bay. It'll start every well. I remote start my truck a lot, so every time I remote start it, I'll hear it faintly. It'll it was just a faint tick until the engine warmed up and you wouldn't hear it anymore. So when you spend the extra money for for the expensive oil, I use World Purpose since the day I bought the truck, and when you spend the extra money, you expect the engine to perform. It has been performing extremely well. No issues with my engine at all. Keep that oil changed frequently with my Royal Purple, and I haven't had any problems with my engine whatsoever. It runs like a sewing machine, but the tick has started, it's gotten ridiculous. And I'll let you guys hear it on cold start. I haven't started my truck in about three or four days. No, maybe about a week. I'll let you guys hear it now because I know the oil is just kind of sitting at the bottom. And I want you guys to hear how it sounds. It sounds awful. Here we go, guys. All right, listen to this ridiculous noise. Come on. Here we go. Now. So, um, I'll have that fixed up in a second. So I'm almost done. Notice. Oh, that sucks. Okay, guys, today's the day. I started fixing my manifold issue. So I've removed the fender guard. is right there super simple I didn't want to film this whole video because there's this guy posted a video from for this particular problem he did an incredible job his is detailed is precise I just want to show you guys my issue compared to his I removed the two bolts they wasn't bad at all they came right off there right here I use some WD-40, so you don't need a can of this WD-40. And they came right off, no problem. No issue with those. So, I just removed that bolt and the bottom one right there, and the two 10, two, 10, two 10 millimeter bolts. And there's these two, that one. And there's one under here. that one right there well the problem is they're both broke and one of the flinch pipe bolts was super loose so I was getting a rattling noise under my truck Dodge should have recalled this problem because there's no way these bolts should have been snapping off like that Dodge should have definitely recalled this issue so I have all the parts. I'll just make this a short video. I just want to show you guys my issue. Both of my bolts, both bottom and top are broke. So, oh God, I don't know. I just hope it's a stub left in the engine so I can get some pliers or something on it and get it out. So, and another thing I found was the ground. I guess it got too close to the pipe. You can see the other half back there. I have to, I'll fix that while I'm under here. But that's my issue. I'm about to remove the shield and I'll show you guys, when I remove the pipe, I'll show you guys, I mean the manifold, I'll show you guys exactly what's left. Okay guys, I got it off. And it's the worst case scenario. Look at what's happening. It's flush. Especially this one's flush. At least I can't see around that one. That one's flush. 
and you can see that it's being loose. The exhaust is seeping through the pipes. Well, I mean, where both bolts, bolts, where both bolts are broken off at. Exhaust is seeping through there. Hence, the burn area. Wow. I don't know what to do guys, I really don't. I'm gonna try to get a brush and clean up in there and see and see if I can remedy some. I'll show you guys as I go along. This is a bomber. Okay guys, I just got some brake cleaner. Rag. Sprayed the rag real good. Didn't want to spray up in there. Uh, just to give it a wipe down. Probably could have got a little bit more cleaner, but I can see the boat better. Both boats, uh, you know, I would, I would want them to be broke, broken, just leaving a little stub, but both boats are broken inside of the head, which sucks. So I gotta figure out a way to get them out without messing up anything. And I'm gonna show you guys whatever I come up with. I've seen some guys uh, weld some boats because these heads are aluminum. Take a, a, a nut and uh, hold it up against that head and shoot and um, tack weld it against the uh, broken screw. And what they were able to manage to uh, screw the boat out. So what I'm first thing I'm gonna do is shoot, because I don't have my welder here. The first thing I'm gonna do is shoot some PB blaster inside of that the, the cracks of that screw, both of them, just to try to get it loose in there. Hopefully I get lucky. I got some tap, some drill taps here and I got my drill, so I'm gonna do that first and let it sit for a while. And I'll show you guys, whatever I come up with, I'll show you guys the fix, hopefully. Okay guys, I got some, I've already sprayed it, but I got some PB Blaster. And I want to get it in a crack. I want to get it right along those threads. Okay guys, about this, maybe about eight years ago, I never used it. I don't think they're selling this case. I never used them. My thing, those bolts were pretty tight up on the manifold, but they was tightened against something. So they should be fairly easy to remove since I have my drill here. I wish I had my impact here, my short impact. That would have helped. But I'm gonna try with one of them. Excuse me for that. I'm gonna try with one of them and see how it works. I'm gonna go through the center with it and see because they're not tightened against something, so they shouldn't be that hard to come out. I hope. Oh, my hands are crossed. Okay, guys. I don't have my MIG welder at this house. It's about 80 miles away. I was just debating should I go to the other house and grab it. But I know the cobalt drill bits are very, very good on metal. So it's one about three, seven, sixty-four inch. And they were 95 cents. So instead of me driving 80 miles, hopefully I don't have to do this. I got a, a uh, my drill my drill bit is fitting. I mean my drill fits pretty good in the space I'm working working in. So I'll uh, try to get that drill down so I can get that extractor put in there and hope for the best. I also shot some PB blaster and some WD-40 inside of there and let it sit overnight. So that should help. But I bought these guys for 95 cents. This is probably the cheapest I've ever spent in Menards. So. Unfortunately. So I'm gonna try out this and see what happens. I'll keep you guys a bit as I go along. 
Okay guys, I'm not quite dead center, but I'm, I've am i gotten in there just with a couple minutes of rope. The key I found with these cobalt bits is uh, low speed and force. I know I say apply, apply a little force, but I have to apply, you know, have to push and I'll, I'll film, I, I kind of give it a, a really nice firm push as I'm drilling with low RPMs or low speed and it rips that uh, the screw right out. So I wanna show you guys how good it's doing when I go, when I push firmly. I, can, I give it a nice push as I'm drilling with low RPMs or low speed and this, it, it goes to uh, cutting really, really good then. At first I was just letting it, kinda pressing it just lightly and drilling with a decent speed and it wasn't really doing anything but I'm gonna try to brace my phone here like I said it sucks I don't have my tripod I wasn't I wasn't going to record this but I'm gonna show you guys I'm not exactly dead center but I'm not nowhere near close to the threads neither so Let me try to prop up somewhere. I'll try it now like this. As you can see, it's just five of that. I'm pushing it. I'm going to blow. So I just want to show you guys that. All right, guys, I'm set up. I just made it just enough of the extractor to catch. And I am um, put a one fourth inch socket on it. And let's see, we got oh, it's turning out, it's turning out, guys. Oh, wow! Oh, god. Oh, man, I know this is only one of them, I got one more to go, but. And I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even center. I'm not even dead center, guys, and it's coming out. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm excited, I'm happy. Oh. I was hoping for the worst, but look at that. I'm so far off. I'm so far off center. I'm like, I'm on the edge. And that thing is coming out. I'm gonna try to get dead center on that one and use my angle drill. Well look guys, it's coming out. I'm happy. Oh God, I'm happy. Man, that thing is gripping too. Oh, let me get it zooming in. Goodness. Oh no, the extractor broke. I'm gonna lock some pliers onto that and pull that out. Oh my goodness, that sucks. What's the next size I get? Oh, these are big. I'm gonna try to use that number two. Guys, I should've went a little slower. So that's a lesson. Just take your time, otherwise, let me be on the angle, I broke it. Take your time. I was so excited. I just was going fast. I just should have went slow and slow and slow and got it out. So the good thing is I got something going. The bad thing is I broke my instructor. Okay, guys, this is what I did. But this is where I'm at right now. Of course, uh, put some pliers on the top one and it came out. But the bottom one was tough for me because uh, I don't have my angle drill. The head broke on me on my angle drill. It's been broke for another job I've done. It's kind of loose, so it didn't work. And I, my other drills, I couldn't get in here. I couldn't get a good angle on it. I don't want to definitely screw off into the head. So what I did was went to the other house and grabbed my welder real quick. Instead of me trying to go buy an angle drill. And 
put a screw right there. I got a, this is an amazing wood. I only use it once. It's a 230 volt. It's a MIG. You can see all this stuff is new. I'm, I mean, I've got extra screws and stuff just sitting in here. But anyway, guys, uh, I got a extension cord running to the garage. I, I used some smaller screws. They didn't work. The best screws to me is one like this one, but it has to be a big one. The one with the washer made into it. It has to be a big one. Like I got on here, a huge one, because it allowed me to fill in because that broken screw was flush. It was flush to the head as you guys seen, so. All right, guys, uh, I got it out. I had to stop, I had to go to the store for a minute, but let me brighten it up some. see is coming out that one's out that one's out and I'll be putting everything back together I just want to show you guys this and I hope my video helped you guys out in any way possible with this job like I said there's another guy who posted a video he did both sides and he did a great job on both sides of his truck his Dodge Ram and super detail super job but I just want to show you guys my issue of course he had to get somebody to track a couple bolts from him but I want to show you guys exactly what I did and how I got him out so I'm not gonna show me putting it back together it's pretty much self-explanatory since I took it off the hard part is done got them bolts out so I'll it's getting kind of dark here now I'll finish up in the morning so once again, I hope this video helped you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. I'll be posting more stuff in a second. And thanks for watching. Okay, guys. Before I sign out on this video, I want to give you guys a couple tips and some recommendations. Tip number one, just use a wire brush. Rag. Just clamped up the head. Just gave it a little rub down, a brush down, I'm sorry, and wiped it off. Just kind of get any of the old gasket off and just any residue or any carbon that was built up from the exhaust leak. So, and I also used it on the head. There was a lot of the gasket still on the head, not much. I mean on the manifold, I'm sorry. There was a lot of gasket still on the manifold. And I got my brush and I used it on that. So, just kind of have a clean, I want to have a clean uh, mount between this, the manifold, the gasket, and the head. So, use a wire brush, get that manifold cleaned up, rag, wipe it down. And I recommend you guys, I know it's a few extra dollars more, but use the OEM, the OEM hardware. Uh, no more noise, guys. Something like super, super smooth. I've heard this quiet in months. <laughs>